Welcome to the people of God that the Lord raised to give the last three messages to the world. Just before the judgments of God fall upon the world. In harmony with other prophecies of the end, the message of the three angels of Revelation 14 places us also in a universal and final context. The chronological and the global context of its content is set at the time of the second coming of Christ. They are the last messages that God gives so that the whole earth knows that the time to give the final blow to the kingdom of evil has come. Those who proclaim the messages are represented by the three angels, proving that those messages have a divine and heavenly origin. We must prepare ourselves to give this message because this world will not pass away without a final confrontation. Revelation 13 verses 14 and to 18, in comparison with Revelation 14 verses 9 to 11, the last third message. The glory of God will fill the earth in such a way that all can behold it. Though, unfortunately, most people will remain unconverted. Revelation 18, 1 to 5. For this reason, men and all their works will be destroyed. Revelation 21, 1, 2 Peter 3, 7, verses 10 to 13. But when will this happen? Matthew 24, verses 1 to 3. Can men know exactly when the time of the end will start? Yes, of course, we find this in Daniel 12, verse 4, and several other prophecies of the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. For the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets, said prophet Amos, the prophet Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. Before destroying the antediluvian world, God sent Noah to announce that event for 120 years. Before destroying Sodom and Gomorrah, he sent a message given by angels through Lot. Before destroying other ancient cities, he announced it through his prophets, even the destruction of all Jerusalem. Before destroying the world, he will have a people who will announce it before all the earth. Revelation 14, verses 6 to 11. Will the Lord not allow enough time for this message to reach all the corners of the earth? Matthew 24, verse 14. The first angel's message is addressed to a secularized world which has lost the fear of God. That world began to take shape through the atheistic French Revolution at the end of the 18th century. Mankind had been threatened for more than a millennium with the teaching of a terrible eternal burning torment, an idea which originally came from paganism and is not found in the Bible. It was then that Darwin appeared with his theory on the origin of species. We did not come from a divine creation, he said, but from an evolutionary process. Our nearest ancestor would have been a monkey or gorilla. Who could render an account to a gorilla for the things he had done in this life? From that time, millions went to the other extreme and lost even a healthy fear of God. For this reason, the first angel's message begins by saying, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship the one who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and the springs of waters. We find this message in Revelation 14, verses 6 and 7. It was then that the Seventh-day Adventist church was born. God raised our church to counteract the secular atheism which denies his authorship of this creation. 
Our pioneers also grasped, guided by God, that secular skepticism was caused by forgetting the day which commemorates creation, the seven-day Sabbath. They saw that the fear of God is related to the importance of keeping the divine commandments before the reality of the judgment of God. Says wise Solomon in his book Ecclesiastes, Fear God and keep his commandments, for God will bring every deed into judgment, along with every hidden thing, whether good or evil. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14. Let us pay attention to an important fact. The first angel's message of Revelation 14 is referred to as another angel and not as a first angel. We know that it deals with the first of the three angels who proclaim the last messages that are to be given to the world, because the following two are mentioned as second and third angels, Revelation 14, verse 8 and 9. But why, as another, uh, why would he mention him as another angel instead of first? Doubtless, to connect it with the message of the angel whom he had recorded earlier in his book. The former angel seen by John in vision was the one who blasted the seventh trumpet, Revelation 11, verse 15. The trumpets are judgments or punishments of God which fall upon the world, Revelation 8 and 9. The seven trumpets corresponds to the final judgment, Revelation 11, verses 15 and 19. During that last trumpet, the Father and the Son assume the kingdoms of this world and confront the nations which rebelled against him. It is the time of judging the dead and to give reward to the faithful and to destroy those who destroy the earth, verse 18. All this is given in the context of a door that is open in the temple of heaven, which leads to the most holy place, the place of the throne of God and of the judgment. Your wrath has come, says the angel who blasts the seventh trumpet, that is, the time for judgment, Revelation 11:18. The hour of his judgment has come, Revelation 14:7, repeats the first angel of Revelation 14. The elders of the heavenly court kneel and worship God because he assumes his authority over the kingdom of this world. Revelation 11:16. The message of the first angel likewise claims to worship the worship of the creator to all the dwellers of the earth because the hour of his judgment has come. In other words, the messages of these two angels of the seventh uh, trumpet and the first of Revelation 14 are complementary and correspond to the time of the end. On the other hand, the three angelic messages form a compact and unified whole. All of them are related to the message of judgment of the former angel. The third angel warns all who worship the Antichrist, represented by a counterfeit earthly creature, that they will suffer the last place in which the wrath of God is consummated. We find this in Revelation 14, 15, and 16. It is the day of your wrath, says the angel of the seventh trumpet, Revelation 11, 18. The fall of Babylon of the second angel's message is also linked to the destruction of the kingdoms of this world when the Lord and his Christ, or anointed king, take the kingdoms of the world during the seventh trumpet. At that time, the door to the most holy place of the temple is open, and the Ark of the Covenant, which contains the Ten Commandments, is seen. Those who obey the messages of the three angels keep the commandments of God in agreement with the heavenly vision, Revelation 14, 12. Let us consider the second angel's message. 
It is addressed now to an apostate religious world which has abandoned the law of God and has fallen in the final corruption which requires the intervention of God to destroy this world forever. That message is expressed this way. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. Revelation 14, verse 8. Babylon is a harlot who represents the apostate church of Rome. Her prostitution is expressed in her abominable idolatry in, and in her union of the, with the governments of this world. Revelation 17 and Ephesians 5, uh, we can read the symbol of a woman that represents the church. And in the case of the harlot woman, her name means confusion and reminds us of the history of the Tower of Babel, which illustrated the manner in which men tried to emancipate themselves from God. The world was still young and it had not yet ripened for the final harvest. There, God confused their tongues and the coalition to build the tower was scattered. But at the end of the world, the devil will be permitted to unite the churches and religions that will have rejected the call to glorify the Creator by keeping His commandments, especially the fourth one, which requires the observance of the day of the Creator. The rebellion against God will be for only a short time an unholy alliance which will attempt to exalt once more the principles and practice of false religion. We find this uh, in chapter 17 of the book of Revelation, verses 12 to 13 and verse 17. Unlike the other two angelic messages of Revelation 14, this second message is not at first described as being proclaimed with power. At the beginning of the contest with secularism, the religious authorities would consider themselves as being slandered. They would seek to reverse their image before the world. But when the religions are able to reach an agreement on common points, and by deceiving the secular governments, they are able to impose their will upon the world, then the second angel's message will be strengthened by the powerful message of the angel of Revelation 18. The entire earth will be filled with God's glory so that the hidden refuge of lies will be exposed. We can read Isaiah 28 verses 16 and 17 especially in connection with that kind of refuge of lies that uh, usually take place in this world. We may see also the inner corruption of Rome and of, of all the religions that unite with her in this refuge of uh, corruption or sin or, or of lie. After this, said John, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice, he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Revelation 18, verses 1 to 3. The Babylonian union that leads to the grand final apostasy of the world will be reached through deception. The miraculous power of the demon succeeds in tricking the entire world into uniting under the rebellious banner, Revelation 16, verses 13 and 14. 
the corruption that attempts to conceal itself under the title of Holy See cannot be concealed any longer. Instead of blasphemously calling the haughty prince Holy Father as the dwellers of the earth do, God calls him man of sin and warns that he will destroy him with the brightness of his coming. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. The rat line, a common expression that was employed to, to refer to those who were escaping the courts of Europe and found refuge in the Vatican. The rat line through which so many murderers, robbers, and moral abusers were able to find refuge will no longer serve as a shield against civil or religious righteousness. His filthiness will come to light, and his moral and demonic corruption will be denounced together with the following pathetic call. Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Revelation 18, verses 4 and 5. Are we not already living in that final stage of modern Babylon? Are not the churches and religions uniting around common programs and doctrines? Is not a considerable amount of her filthiness already coming to light? So much display of outer holiness that not serve but to conceal her inner filthiness. At a time when calls are made for union and globalization, God calls us to withdraw and not be involved in the principles and practices that are in opposition to the gospel. Depart. Depart. Go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Purify yourself, you who carry the vessels of the Lord, Isaiah 52, 11. And we find something similar in the New Testament in the second epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 14 to 17. The third angel's message will be given in the context of a great final confrontation. Just when the Antichrist gathers the nations to impose a day of rest in opposition to the day of the Lord, God raises a people to denounce the deception. On the one hand, we have the threat of the Antichrist, supported by the nations consisting of death by starvation. They will not be permitted to buy or sell unless they accept the mark of his authority. On the other hand, we have the divine warning of the third angel that those who don't receive the seal of God will be tormented in the lake of fire which will devour his adversaries. The seal of God, as already seen in another lesson, is in his law, specifically in the fourth commandment, which ordains acknowledgement of God as creator, by keeping his day, the weekly seven-day Sabbath. What a tremendous message has God entrusted us to give to the world. He wants to save many from secularist deception and from an apostate religion who honors him with the lips, but not with the heart. The proof is that neither of the two extremes keep his fourth commandment. The Apostle John declared that the one who says that he loves God and does not keep his commandments is a liar. For this reason, they will be destroyed. Nothing that refuses to honor God by keeping his commandments will deserve to live forever. The purpose of our creation is to glorify God for having created us. This is possible in spite of being sinners because the price of our ingratitude was paid at the cross, and through it we can obtain forgiveness. Let us come together to the court of heaven, praising the Creator and the Redeemer, 
for the marvelous work he has done in us and for our redemption through his blood. <laughs>